Night. You and your friends are riding bikes around a small city and notice a meteorite flying in the sky. It burns with a bright green flame and then falls right into a small pond near the town. You instantly dash to the crash site. The water on the pond's surface is foaming and bubbling. The incandescent meteorite slowly sinks to the bottom and illuminates the black waters with a green light. Mesmerized by this picture, you approach the edge of the pier. The green glow is reflected in your glasses, beckoning you. You take a step, suddenly, you fall into the water and pass out. You wake up in the hospital. You grab the edge of the bed to get up and feel how it crunches under your fingers. You look at your palms and scream. They are all covered with steel. Your friends come and tell you that you flew out to the shore, probably after you've touched the meteorite. Then, inside your body, some changes at the genetic level began. They put a mirror in front of you. You take a glance and see yourself covered with steel. You don't feel fear, but you're screaming in delight instead. You're made of metal now. Not exactly, your friend explains. Your skin cells are covered with a layer of the thinnest and strongest steel and everything else in your body is ordinary as it has always been. Your movements are not constrained. It's like you're covered in a knight's chainmail made of nano steel particles. You look out the window and take a deep breath. Your lungs are filling up with air. But what about the skin? The doctor comes in and says that your skin cells no longer need oxygen. There are no pores the air used to penetrate through any longer. Your lungs have become more voluminous to make up for the lack of oxygen. Also, you can hold your breath for a longer time. At night, you can't sleep because the steel eyelids put a lot of pressure on your eyes. You decide to leave the room, but the door is closed. You push the handle harder and the lock breaks. You step out and meet the doctor. He asks you to come back since your treatment is not finished. And tomorrow, you will be transferred to another place. You say you feel great and you want to leave. The doctor tries to grab you and you run away. The siren turns on. You understand that they want to transport you to a secret lab for research and experiments. Several orderlies surround you. You clench your fists and hit the wall. It collapses easily, as if it was made of cardboard. You break through the walls and leave the hospital. You tell your friends about what happened, and all of you decide to leave the town for a while. You get on your bikes, and at this moment, several black cars appear on the road. They come for you. You ride away from them and go into the forest, where cars can't pass. Several scientists and men in black suits are chasing you. You come to the pond and remember the doctor's words about enlarged lungs. You decide to hide under the water. You jump and slowly fall to the bottom. Ten minutes have passed and your lungs still have a small supply of air. The pursuers can't find you and leave. You try to swim out but drown. The steel skin has made you heavier and unable to swim. You push off from the bottom but drown back. Fortunately, your friends jump into the pond and help you get out. You're wet, but the skin doesn't rust, and it dries quickly. You ride a bicycle towards a cheap hotel to hide there and figure out what to do next. The sun shines brightly. You spend several hours pedaling. Your friends are sweating, but you aren't. The skin is covered with dust now, but it's enough to wipe it with a rag to look clean again. In a normal body, sweat is released to cool the body and prevent it from overheating. Your body doesn't cool down now, but that's okay. Your skin becomes so hot that you can fry an egg in your palm. Fire and cold temperatures aren't harmful to you either. You check into a motel and realize that it's hard for you to move. You hear the grinding of metal when you raise your hands or walk. Your friend gives you the oil that lubricates the chain on the bike. You cover the skin with it, and it works. You're moving freely again. Steel skin increases your weight and the load on all your muscles. You quickly get used to it, and your body becomes more trained in a few hours. But the coolest thing is a superpower. Not only can you destroy a wall or tear an iron plate, but also break glass with a light torch. At the motel, you go to the refrigerator and grab some magnets. They stick to you, and it's pretty tricky to remove them. You turn on the TV, and they tell you that you and your friends are wanted. You're all on channels. You all leave the motel and get on your bikes and drive as far away as possible. You turn the pedal so hard that they break. To continue your trip, you decide to rent a car. After a couple of hours, you run out of gas. Your weight has increased, which means the vehicle consumes more fuel. You and your friends are walking along the road. An old pickup truck stops. A driver with a thick beard offers to take you to the nearest town with a railway station. The driver keeps silent all the way. The beads of sweat are running down his face. Is he nervous? 
you feel that something is wrong. When you enter the town, you see your photo on every streetlight. There's even a reward announced for your capture. You ask the driver to stop, but he doesn't listen to you. Then you punch through the car floor with your feet and crash into the asphalt. The car stops. There's not even a scratch on your legs. Several black vehicles drive up to you from different streets. The car doors flung open abruptly. People in black suits caught your friends, but you managed to escape. You run to the roof of a five-story house. Scientists and men in black surround you. You go to the edge and jump. Like a real superhero, you land on half-bent legs. The asphalt under you is destroyed and your sneakers are torn. You run away, touch the parked cars with your hand and leave big scratches on them. You run into the forest and decide to spend the night here. You break several thick branches with the palm of your hand and make a fire. You don't need it since you can't get cold, but you just don't want to stay in complete darkness. You hold your hand over the fire and feel nothing. You look at the tip of your fingers and realize that there are no fingerprints on them. You close your eyes and imagine your future life. All metal detectors go crazy when you pass through them. Banks, the airport, nightclubs, you make the security service nervous everywhere. But the worst thing is that you will be hiding almost all your life. You fall asleep and see laughing people pointing at you. You don't like it and you wake up. After a few seconds, you suddenly understand what you need to do next and how to stop the pursuit. You wander through the forest for several hours. Your skin creaks because of the lack of lubrication. Finally, you go out on the road, then see a roadside hotel with cars parked nearby. You open the trunk of one of them and pick up a bottle of engine oil. Then you quietly enter the hotel, get into a room and charge the phone. An hour later, a woman comes in. She screams when she sees you. You grab your phone and jump out the window. Several black cars pull up to the hotel. A helicopter appears in the sky. You run to a dump with abandoned cars and turn on the camera on your phone. You record yourself and tell your story. You admit that you didn't choose this superpower and want to live a normal life. Afterward, you post it on all social medias. Suddenly, somebody turns on the power crane, which drags the old cars with a giant magnet. You stick to the magnet and can't move. People in black caught you. There's nowhere to run. But right at this moment, reporters and ordinary people are coming to the dump. Now, when everyone knows your story, you're protected from experiments in the lab.